Hello and welcome to String Tech. This video will give an introduction to the textbook String Tech and hopefully you will see it as an awesome resource that you can use in your classroom. Although anyone interested in learning a string instrument or learning more about a string instrument will value from this book, I really wrote it with the string education student and the collegiate professor in mind for a specific class, which is string tech. And that is uh, learning how to play an orchestral string instrument, violin, viola, cello, and bass. Really not intended to be a textbook for a methods course, uh, which is different. That is how to how to teach the instruments. Uh, instead, I'm really just interested in, in how to play them. So why strings? Well, strings are important. Uh, and students need good teachers in string classrooms as well. There are many school districts in our country that have them. However, I'm a little uh, suspect that perhaps, it seems like, half of those classes are taught by non-string players. Now, non-string players are very capable of teaching really well, but there is a comfort level there of string instruments that, that uh, people seem to have. And I gotta tell you, as I have gone around the country and I have done clinics, the, the largest clinic I've ever done uh, was at Midwest and the title was Teaching Strings for the Non-String Player. And so I feel, and when I teach my classes, I have my students look at each other and I'll say, I want you to point to your neighbor and say, you're gonna have a strings class. <laughs> and, and they'll turn around and say, I'm gonna teach a strings class and say yes. And by the way, you're very capable of it. But you need to have a comfort level. Uh, on playing the instruments and, and understanding them. And that's what this text is for. There was a recent study that concluded, uh, uh, it was a survey given to, I don't know, 1,500 non-string players teaching strings and their comfort level of teaching strings. And I know this seems like a no-brainer, but the truth is that many of them had a course like this and it, it very much helped them with their comfort level of teaching strings. So, therefore, all that to say, this is a really important class. And, uh, and I'm hoping that this text will give you a really great resource to help teach this class well. So uh, an overview of the class, it is broken, or the book, it is broken into three parts. The first part is all about how to play the instruments. The second part is uh, a bit of a workbook and actual opportunities to play. And then the third part is to talk about Boeings. And I kind of want to break these down a little bit. So the first part, you know, what's in it? Well, um, again, it is an introduction to basics. I am not in any way trying to teach everything that there is to need to know about playing a string instrument. That's not uh, the purpose of the text. And by the way, it is a one semester class. I've always felt important that the teachers teach all four instruments and so they don't have a lot of time on each one. So what is important? Understanding concepts, okay? And understanding things, uh, the terminology, the nomenclature, understanding uh, issues like I call something hand frames rather than finger patterns or hand shapes. I call them hand frames. And so just understanding all, all of the nomenclature and terminology, how to, how to tune instruments, you know how important that is? I can't tell you how many broken strings uh, my, <laughs> my uh, undergrad class has done just because that's tricky, isn't it, right? So just those real basic kind of things. And of course, you can add to that if you feel uh, necessary to add to certain issues. But I'm gonna tell you that there's enough in part one to give your students a pretty solid foundation on concepts, things to understand. Part two, to me, this is the magic of the book. So what is part two? Part two is first a workbook. And so uh, you can see here, I've got the, the uh, overall geography of the fingerboard that students need to fill out. That's really important. Um, our hand frames, hand shapes, whatever you call them, are based on uh, the key signatures that we live in. That's the environment that you are given. And that dictates how you make the shapes in your hand. It's really important that, that students see the overall picture of, of the hand frames. And then I detail each one uh, of those strings and which finger goes with which string and what does that look like on the staff that's so very very important and so i detail all that then underneath that students have opportunity to perform those things 
in a uh, in these what I call noodle exercises, and I do them string by string, and so that that students can can demonstrate. Yep, I got it. I when I see when I see second space on the violin, I know that second finger right, and they're learning these these things. So very important. Uh, and then um, the second page is uh, about bowings and nomenclature and stuff. I forgot to mention, good pedagogy, you probably understand, is to divide left side issues and right side issues. And I tried very hard to do that in this book. So left side issues, hand frames, right? You've gotta know which, which buttons to push, they're not buttons, which fingers to use, and the shapes to use, you've got to know that first. You can't even play in tune if you're doing wrong stuff, putting fingers in wrong spots. So that's left side issues. It's also intonation, gives you opportunity to work on intonation issues. So left side. Right side stuff is tone production, rhythms, bowings, all of those kinds of things. And so you'll see that on the right page. So every key signature, every student's looking at their instrument, left side issues, mostly right side issues uh, with those things. And at the bottom, they've got a good three, solid three songs at least. Uh, that are that are simple that they can play and then they can demonstrate that they've learned those those things So like I say part two is the magic of this book part three really details uh, Boeing's and rhythm because Boeing's and rhythm go hand in hand uh, As you know our Boeing's are French and so there's a lot of French terms I want the kids to know what they are and I want them to understand uh, how to perform those things and what that would look like in the literature. So I have all of these examples for that. So, uh, and again, I'm not trying to teach everything, but it's enough of a foundation that students can wrap their brain around detache and staccato and even off the string bow strokes of a uh, brush stroke and spiccato and things like that. I, I want them to understand that. And then I finish the book with these um, the, these rhythm charts, and I've seen this elsewhere in the literature, and I love them. So what I did, you, you make up a, a rhythm, and you just put it on a string, right? And then you gently, the next one, you you uh, move the uh, difficulty uh, level just a little bit, and uh, through maybe notes, and then through slurs, and then through, you don't never change the rhythm. That's the beauty of this. Rhythm always stays the same. But it demonstrates to the students how uh, complicated things like uh, articulations and bowings and and slurs and all that can can do to a very simple rhythm and so it's a progression I like that and of course uh, it's very important that they understand that in uh, simple meters as well as compound meters so uh, that's the the part three I hope you see the value of this book uh, even if you uh, already have a textbook that you really really like I think you're going to see that this will be a great supplement to that as well. I am very, I, I've taught this with um, a course packet for many, many years, and I am super thankful for Conway Publications of putting this into a text. And I think you will enjoy it. And I think the, I know, I, I know, because I've used it for many years, that your students will really benefit from this. So um, there you go. And I wish you the best. Take care.